God to work in someone else's life, but I find it hard to believe or feel worthy to ask God to work in mine. Ooh, thank you for sending that in. What do you have, Cor? I'd say, would you say to someone else that they're not important enough for God? Would you say to someone else that they're not worthy enough for God? Would you say to someone else their problem isn't significant enough for God? If you wouldn't say that to somebody else, then stop saying it to yourself. That's good. Because mm -hmm. you are God's creation and you are created in the image of God. So don't say things to yourself that you wouldn't say to somebody else. But someone felt that. I mean, they wrote it in. And I, I respect that you feel that way. And I'm sad that you feel that way. Yeah. What do you have, Amy? I would ask them a question back. I would say, are you a son or a servant? Mm -hmm. Because servants um, have a different approach than a, a son does. A son has access. A son has ownership. A son has responsibility. A son has a relationship. A servant just comes in you know, no connection with the father. So I would, I would challenge that thought process that I am unworthy, unloved. God will do it for somebody else and not for me. It's like, wait, 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 wait. I am a daughter of the most high God. I know who I am and I cannot be shaken from that stance. Okay. What do you have, Roxy? Wow. I, I think that's a false humility and ah. she's got pride. Ooh, that's and good. Um, she needs to repent of that <clears throat> because she's looking at herself. Well, sometimes when we think we're so lowly, we're no good, we're so focused on ourselves, we forget who God is. That's unbelief. Hebrews says that we have a high priest that has felt our similar feelings. That's right. He has felt those things, but we can approach his throne of grace and mercy to receive grace and mercy. So what I would like to say to her is read the scriptures, as Amy and Corey said, read the scriptures about who you are and who God is right. and start believing who he is. He is your father. Right. Angela, what do you have? Yeah, you know, one thing that I go to is we recognize and we'll say all the time, you know, he came and died for us while we were yet sinners. And we say it effortlessly. You know, it's the foundation of our belief in Christ. But a lot of that doesn't come within. And so we see ourselves in our worst state. We always see our biggest flaws, our biggest weaknesses, our most atrocious sins and compromises. And when we do that, we focus on that one space in us and we're saying, you didn't die for me then. But truly, if you take that scripture, it is him saying, I died for you right. when you chose the most atrocious version of you, when you were caught in the most ridiculous sin. That's when I chose to die for you. And when we recognize that is for me, it changes everything. And now I know I was loved in my worst state. Oh, I can show up in any mm -hmm. state. My mm -hmm. Jesus is with me and he mm -hmm. truly is the God who is love. Right, but I hope that answered the question for you. But I want to tell you one thing that I'm so grateful that you watch us. And one time I was in worship um, at our church and I was praying for all these people. This one, this one, this one, this one. And, and God spoke to my heart so clearly. How about I fill you up? Kathy. So I feel the opposite of you. I believe that God's for me all the time. And the other people, okay. All right. okay.